Yo, I'm Jay Bearshank. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're here um, in the Nan province of Thailand, a place called Santi Suk, uh, very close to my house, maybe 30 minute drive. Uh, I have you guys propped up on my motorcycle here. We're overlooking some uh, hills behind me here. Um, I just went to a coffee shop that's right over there just around this bend, five minutes or so. Beautiful coffee shop, absolutely loved it there. Probably my new favorite one, and I go there often. Nice, uh, relaxing atmosphere. Um, beautiful views and beautiful weather, as you can see. And uh, yeah, we're here for another edition of Book Reviews. Today we have an amazing book that I uh, actually just finished. But uh, don't worry, I've been thinking about it for a long time because it's a very large book, and uh, yeah, I've had time to ponder it in between. It's, um, about 1125 pages but before we start the review I want to tell you that the readability it was a really easy read um, it never felt like an enormous book whatsoever I was always drawn back to it and I was never feeling like I had to push myself to get through certain parts of it everything was gripping and everything was part of this intricate chess game that this book really is and that book is called Shogun by James Clavel. Um, this book is about Japan, as you may have guessed. Um, the 1600s, um, during a political war that was going on, and also during uh, an infiltration from uh, Catholicism that was infiltrating Japan at this point and dominating trade with China. Um, and this book covers the story of, an, uh, of a Dutch pilot who is supposedly the first uh, English or Dutch or Western besides uh, Port Portugal or Spain to ever go to Japan, ever sail to Japan. And um, the book is simply wonderful because what it does is it takes you into the minds of every character and lets you be a part of them and a part of their personal endeavor to achieve these personal ambitions. But the thing that's so interesting is that before you ever get into the minds of any of the characters, James Clavel lays the groundwork for Japanese society, Japanese customs, Japanese culture, Japanese obeisance, respect towards uh, you know different classes and whatnot. So before you're ever taken into the minds of these people and uh, understanding what they're trying to gain and why, you understand how they're able to actually do that because, you know, um, in Japan, during this time, one wrong slip to your superior and they cut your head off. So if you want to get something, you have to be able to understand how to orchestrate that perfectly and sometimes you have to think a million steps ahead. Um, so what he does so beautifully in the beginning of this book is lays the framework for Japanese society, Japanese culture, and explains to you their beautifully cunning, rigorous culture. I love Japan. Um, I've been there for three months. It was the first place I ever traveled alone um, when I was 18. I absolutely fell in love with the place. I don't know why I was drawn there. I think because Japanese J Japan always kind of like, to me, had like this mystical kind of... Um, appeal to it I guess because of samurai and that kind of bushudo uh, mentality which is really exemplified in this book he explains bushudo so well and it's you know a core theme throughout the book um, because the book's basic its premise is the Western man comes to Japan and in Japan the Western man is a savage he's uneducated he's dirty he's undisciplined and throughout the book you see how the Western man becomes civilized through Japanese culture and even though Japanese culture is brutal and um, intense and um, sav uh, well not savage but deadly you see how in between all that there is this beautiful harmony and eloquent um, yeah, harmony that is uh, vibrating in it. And um, yeah, so the guy shows up and you know they don't respect him and they don't like him, they see him as a pirate and then slowly he becomes intertwined with the political war going on because there's an internal struggle between these daimyos and um, uh, the basically there's a huge political scheme war going on and the westerner gets 
put right into the middle of it because he has a ship and the ship can be used as a navy and there's some things with trading with the with the Catholics and the navy and the Chinese that become really instrumental for one of the daimyos to to use this westerner so he becomes a really instrumental part um, but while all this is going on you're getting to see and getting to hear oh my gosh such in depth analysis of what each of these individual people want there's so many characters in this book and they're each at different levels you know there's some that are head men of villages some that are daimyos some that are minor daimyos some that are you know um ladies of important people and consorts of important people and you know it's just such an interesting dynamic between the whole culture and how they're all working together and how they're all you know using each other and it's just such a wonderful book and then also there's a love story intertwined with this book between the Englishman and a Japanese woman and through that love story you get to see such a beautiful eloquent um, masterful display of Japanese culture because she kind of is the main educator for him in, in Japanese culture and um, also kind of how like the the meta experiences in life like always trump anything like micro like a culture is micro and love is macro and how these two people the western man the western savage man and the you know highly respected civilized be beautiful japanese woman how they can come together and you know become one through something that is much bigger than japanese or westerner which is love and that whole thing is really 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 beautiful um this book is a psychological thriller like beyond all other. I've never read a book that is such a chess game. I've never read a book where I actually feel like um, I feel like I'm getting involved with like dangerous secrets. I feel like I, sh I need to hide because I'm reading and I know everybody's little plots and I know everybody's little secrets and I think oh my gosh you know this is dangerous information for me to have when I'm reading it I like you know want to like close the book and hide it because I'm like oh geez you know this is, this is serious information. Uh, there's so much going on and you know so many people all with these ideas oh it's so great. The main, one of the main characters is that he's a daimyo, his name's Taranga or Taranga, and um, I really, really, really love this guy. He's kind of like the, um, like maybe the underdog as you would say, like everyone's trying to basically get him to uh, kill him. They're, they're trying to get him out of the game because he's a old daimyo who has a lot of respect. He's never lost any wars and, you know, highly respected man, so all the other dominoes kind of like team up against him in a way and there's just a lot of treachery and manipulation that goes on with it but I loved it because he compa he uh, uses this analogy of like all of his um, important dangerous assets he compares them to hawks and falcons because he likes to go hunting with hawks and uh, there's parts in this book where he's like just like out on the hunt and he's thinking about strategy and he's thinking about all of his uh, pawns and characters and you know thinking about his chess game and he's comparing all these characters in the book to different falcons for different reasons and it's just so beautiful I really loved it and at the end of this book like the last few pages you just get a deep look into like his true intentions into what he's truly truly doing and you're just like wow it's such a amazing story such an amazing story um, I'd recommend it 10 out of 10. Uh, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. It's action packed. There's a lot of killing and samurai stuff and you know all sorts of that. There's lots of love and lust kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of humor just in the way that these people are kind of like thinking because there are some people who are extremely arrogant and selfish and like the things that they do you know it makes you laugh and like the way that they're doing things that they seem that they think are significant but really in the grand scheme of things are being orchestrated by others. It just makes you laugh like the whole the whole ridiculousness of the whole book because it's ridiculous because at the end of the day you know this is real life and people are really thinking like this and there are people who are really orchestrating small occurrences throughout reality like this and I think that it's really important to understand like you know um, you can have a strategy through life I think you know and that you know that might seem silly to say but it's like you know you can orchestrate a lot of things and this book the way that you get to be deep in these guys' minds and you understand decisions and why they're doing things, it makes you think, wow, you know, that's crazy. It's really crazy. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, guys, 10 out of 10. This book is awesome. Uh, 
action, lust, passion, beauty, uh, cultural enrichment, um, his historical knowledge, all of it is very, very awesome. Uh, I loved it. I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, yeah, it was a good one. So that's my review for this book. Shogun by James Clavel. Simply amazing book. Oh, also a part in this book about how like James, I mean, uh, the main character, he has a crew of people that come with him and he gets separated from his crew and a couple months later after he's been civilized by the Japanese people he goes back to his crew and then he looks at his crew with resentment. That part is really 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 interesting to me. I really enjoyed that part. Just that kind of uh, that kind of introspective idea and like why he views them as savages and stuff. It's really interesting. There's a couple like maybe like five parts in this book where you just get such a sobering bang and you really get to have an amazing moment where you think, wow, you know, wow, people are really interesting. People are really interesting. And James Clavel is a goddamn mastermind genius for putting this book together. I'm really impressed. Um, like I said before, Jap Japan is awesome. I love Japan. I love Japanese culture. I'd recommend reading this book accompanied with uh, the book Musashi. I have reviewed that book on my YouTube channel, um, Musashi by Iji Yokoshawa. Uh, I'm not sure that's how you say his name, but that's another beautiful book about Japan from the perspective of a, of a ronin samurai. And if you read that book and this book, you will be entranced by Japanese culture and you'll definitely want to go there because both of those books um, emanate this serious, mystical, powerful, deadly, serene energy that really is still embodied in Japan even today. Um, not so much in Tokyo, but when you go out into the country in Japan and you just kind of walk around, you feel this presence and, you know, it's really embodied through these two books, especially together. So, yeah, guys, that's my review. Peace out from a beautiful place out in the mountains. I hope everyone's doing well. Take it easy. Don't forget to like, subscribe. <laughs>